Hello everyone, Hyper here, and in today's video I wanted to cover the first two bosses that we got to test on the PTR, which is the Terragru, who will be the first boss of the raid, and the Guardian of the First Ones, which will be like a middle of the raid boss. Um, but we got to test both of them on Heroic, and let me tell you, one of these bosses looks like it's going to be extremely fun. And I'm very glad that they're doing this. The Terragru by the looks of it, is not meant to be a super serious first boss where like you have to have some insane strategy to do it, you have, you know, all these things that have to come together. Instead, it's a fun boss. And the way they did this was with anima powers. Um, of course, if you've done Torghast at all, you know that the Terragru is the big bad monster that chases you down if you fail a run. Um, and if he catches up to you, you die. So it is pretty... Um, awesome that we actually get to fight him as the first boss and we get to use some animal powers to defeat him. Um, so when we looked at the dungeon journal, there seemed to be a key component missing from this encounter. There, all the mechanics were listed, everything, uh, so we had a fairly good idea of like how we wanted to deal with the boss. But we didn't know where the animal powers were coming from. There were no ads listed, there was no indication of how we get these animal powers. So when you zone into the raid, the first thing you will see is kind of like a big circular platform with another smaller platform in the middle. Um, and there's going to be four lieutenant type ads. And you kill each one of them and each one of them drops an orb that you then click just like in Torghast and you get to select between three different anima powers that you get to keep for the boss fight. So the animal powers that you actually get to play with are all generic ones. There are no class specific ones at all. And they've designed the boss around your raid having these animal powers. Um, so you will get a total of four. And all the general ones are the rare ones, so the blue quality ones. For example, it's like getting a bunch of stats but not being able to jump. Um, or from time to time taking 99% less damage those types of animal powers. There's a full list of them on Wowhead if you want to check it out. Um, but basically, you get to use these powers against the Terragru. And then once the Terragru gets to 10%, he takes all your powers away and becomes like a DPS race of, are you going to kill the boss before he kills your entire raid? So the boss fight itself is not meant to be difficult. There's only a handful of mechanics. Um, one of them is that a bunch of circles go out on, or debuffs go out on random players. And anyone near them gets feared. These uh, debuffs can be dispelled, so you know you can't just have your whole rate stacked up. Another one is that the boss targets a random player with a chain, shoots out the chain. If this chain hits the player without someone to intercept it, that either you know has an ability that's able to negate it or an animal power that helps you with that, then they get gripped to the boss and instantly die. And then the third major ability is that these little orbs spawn around the room. There's a physical, a magic, and a dot type um, that will essentially empower the boss. So you need players to stand near them, soak it, um, to ensure that the boss deals a little bit less damage to you. So mechanically, not a complex fight. Um, what makes this fight fun are the animal powers, because most of them are kiss-curse animal powers. So you deal more damage, but something bad happens. So a very easy example is the lithium weights one where you have 30% more main stats, but you can't jump. Now the curse on that one isn't that bad, but some of the other ones are a little worse and they can be used in some pretty funny ways. For example, one of them makes your character model 100% bigger, you deal 30% more damage, but you knock anyone who's near you away from yourself. Um, so the intermission phase of this boss requires your whole rate to stack up, and move from safe zone to safe zone three times. And you can imagine if your entire raid is trying to get into the safe zone and you're just a huge character model running around knocking people out of it, it's kind of troll. So I really like that you have the option of either min-maxing this to deal a ton of damage or you know have really good utility, or you can just have some fun with it. Um, and on the first boss of the raid, I think that's super important. Now, a big thing with this boss is that these animal powers are designed to help you with the encounter. So the chain mechanic has a corresponding animal power that helps you deal with it. Um, pretty much everything in here 
has something that is designed with a specific purpose. For example, in the intermission that you're seeing right now, you have to move pretty quick. If you don't have any movement speed, you're going to have a tough time moving from safe zone to safe zone. But there's an anima power that gives all nearby allies 30% movement speed. So it's not going to get you any DPS, but you can imagine how useful that is to have for the intermission phases. Now, once you get the boss to 10%, he will take away all your anima powers and become enraged dealing, I believe it's 500% more damage. So it's absolutely ridiculous. But he won't do any mechanics. All he's going to do is melee people. Um, so this is kind of the phase where you have to kill the boss before you run out of players. And if you've ever had a boss kill where, you know, both of your tanks died and people were frantically running around yelling for bubble taunt and evasion and whatnot, that's what this phase is meant to be. You're meant to kill the boss before you run out of players because at 500% increased damage, no one's going to be able to survive a melee hit from this guy. So you have to kind of rely on your defensive cooldowns and some clever use of um, like immunities and whatnot to be able to get the boss from 10% to zero before you all die. So Terry Grew, probably the best first boss that they've made in a very, very long time. I also want to mention that on the PTR, we did have the option of actually resetting our animal powers and then choosing again. And I'm not entirely sure if this was because um, just for PTR testing purposes that they wanted us to have the option to kind of play around with a few different ones until we find what we like, or even on live, if we're going to be able to reset it, um, just in case you rolled some bad ones or you know, no one in your raid took ones that you're supposed to kind of have to deal with this boss. So we'll see exactly how that plays out, but this boss is looking extremely promising. The second boss we tested is the Guardian of the First Ones, which is the single target sludge fist patchwork damage check um, of the raid. The way this fight works is that the boss starts with 45 energy, and his energy continuously drains throughout the encounter. However, there are three power cores around the room that you can see we have them marked. When you drag the boss near one of those power cores, they will siphon their own energy into the boss. So you essentially refill his energy and you can do this three times um, after which you kind of have to kill the boss before he runs out of energy and at that point you die um, so this fight mechanically was pretty straightforward a little bit boring but i assume for mythic they will introduce some mythic specific mechanic that makes it a little bit more interesting um, on heroic there are only three mechanics that you really need to deal with the first one is this frontal called disintegration. Um, you just move out of it, dodge it, nothing else spe uh, special about it. The second thing are these little sentries that move around the boss. So they deal damage to players continuously, um, or every 0.5 seconds. And also if you happen to stand in the little marked area under the sentry, you get silenced. Um, so they're pretty bad. Now, as you can see, after a core drains all of its energy, it will cast a Meltdown, which just deals a ton of damage, and you have to move a little bit away from it so you don't take um, fatal amounts of damage. And then the third mechanic that he has is Threat Neutralization. As you can see, three players got marked, they need to run out because they take a bunch of damage and anyone within 10 yards of them also take damage. Um, so those are basically the three mechanics. A Frontal, a little Sentry that you have to dodge, and you get a debuff that you have to run out of the raid. Other than that, there is not much else going on. So it's all about do damage and kill the boss before he runs out of energy. Um, now, these mechanics become a tiny bit harder to deal with whenever you are tanking the boss near one of these energy cores or power cores, because your whole raid needs to be standing inside of the shield of the power core, uh, since there's constant huge amounts of raid damage going out, but if you stand in the shield, you take less of that raid damage. Um, so it's just a little bit about space management, but in general, not mechanically difficult at all. Um, as far as mechanics go, I would say this is probably one of the easiest fights I've done in a long time, but I assume there will be some sort of mythic thing that kind of spices it up. So yeah, those are the two bosses that we got to test today, and I'm really, really excited. Um, it was actually a really good testing session. Usually the first session is not that great, um, but 
the first boss didn't work for a few pulls. We tested the second boss, then they reset it, and we got to test the first boss again. So all in all, really, really fun testing session, and I'm looking forward to the rest of the bosses. Let me know in the comment section below what do you think specifically about Terror Group. How do you feel about having a boss where your RNG might change week to week? Um, you have kind of external powers to play with. Uh, in my opinion, it makes it really fun, but I'm looking forward to hearing what you guys think. Thanks for watching the video and I'll see you on the next one. Bye-bye.